In a companion maths cast to this one, we discussed how to find the eigenvalues of an n by n matrix. We then applied the technique to a 2 by 2 matrix and found the eigenvalues. We now have to find the eigenvectors. Before we do that though, let's just have a quick reminder about the eigenvalues. They are the values lambda, such that the top equation here holds. If the matrix is A and V is a vector, then A times V must equal lambda times V. A scales its eigenvectors by the amount equal to the eigenvalue. To find the eigenvalues, remember that we reorganized the equation to read a minus lambda i v equals zero. We then commented that this required det a minus lambda i equals zero. That was enough to give us an nth degree polynomial to solve for the values lambda. In the case of a two by two matrix, the polynomial was quadratic and we got two values of lambda. I'll now write down the matrix A that we used and remind you what the answers for the eigenvalues were. Do you remember it was this matrix? 6, negative 4, 13, negative 11. And we found the eigenvalues 2 and negative 7. What I want to do now is to find the two eigenvectors associated with these eigenvalues. Let's start with 2. We give the eigenvector a name V and assume it's got components v1 and v2. Then we need to solve the equation a minus 2i times v equals 0. We'll do this by Gaussian elimination. Look at the matrix A again. The 2i will have 2's on the leading diagonals. That means we'll have to subtract 2 from the 6 and subtract 2 from the negative 11. The negative 4 and negative 13 will remain exactly as they are. Let's write that array down now and do the Gaussian elimination. I've performed the subtractions of 2 immediately. I hope you can see that it would be easy now to divide the top row by 4 and the bottom row by 13. Let's do that for our first step of the elimination. Normally I would say it's good advice to write down the steps that you've taken in an elimination but here it's so obvious that I haven't bothered. Perhaps you can now see that we can get rid of the bottom row altogether by subtracting row 1 from it. Let's do that on the next page. With the row of zeros now in place, the elimination is finished. We can interpret the top row as follows. 1v1 minus 1v2 equals 0. That means that v1 and v2 are equal. So we could write down our eigenvector in terms of just one of those items instead of both. I've chosen V1, but V2 would have been just as good. Notice that we can then factorize out a factor of V1, and since it's only the direction of the vector we care about and not its overall magnitude, we can choose V1 to be whatever we like. There's no point making silly choice, so let's just take V1 equals 1. We've now found the first eigenvector the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 2. Let's double check that it actually works. We should find that a times this eigenvector just doubles it. Let's see that working in practice. Here's the calculation. It could look a bit confusing if you don't know what to expect. a times 1, 1 first of all is the matrix 6, negative 4, 13, negative 11 times the vector 1, 1. In the next step I've done the matrix multiplication and now although that looks like a matrix it's actually a column containing 6 subtract 4 and 13 subtract 11. The answers of course are 2 and 2 which is exactly 2 times 1 1. We found the eigenvalue in front and the eigenvector 1 1. Clearly we've got the correct answer here. Let's now go back and use the other eigenvalue and find its eigenvector. The other eigenvalue was negative 7. Substituting negative 7 into a minus lambda i gives us 13 negative 4, 13 negative 4. Again the Gaussian elimination is pretty trivial. All we need to do is subtract the first row from the second to get the row of zeros. It'll look like this. As before we now interpret the top row as an equation relating v1 and v2. 13 V1 
minus 4v2 equals 0. We then solve that equation for v1 or for v2. It doesn't really matter which. Now we can construct our eigenvector v. To begin with, it's constructed in terms of v2. And it has some unpleasant numbers in, 4 thirteenths. We might as well choose our v2 to get rid of that fraction. Let's choose v2 equals 13. Then that will make the eigenvector 4, 13. We'll check this one as well. Hitting it with the matrix A on the left should multiply it by negative 7. Let's see if that works. A times 4, 13 is the matrix 6, negative 4, 13, minus 11 times 4, 13. The next step is then a column vector with the arithmetic 24 minus 52 and 52 minus 143. The answer is negative 28, negative 91. Both of those numbers are divisible by negative 7. So finally we write negative 7 times 4, 13. And so we see the eigenvalue, negative 7 at the front. Things have worked out exactly as we expected. We should summarize our answers as follows. Our matrix A has the two eigenvectors 1, 1 and 4, 13 associated with eigenvalues 2 and negative 7 respectively. That concludes my discussion on eigenvalues and eigenvectors for 2 by 2 matrices. You should now be ready to move on to 3 by 3 matrices if you've understood everything so far.